All right, greeting YouTubers and members of the portfolio class. Um, I'm Mr. Specht. I'm Miss French. And we are the portfolio teachers at Millennium Middle School in Florida. We are. And it's a jo job we both enjoy and we co-teach the class. And pretty much, how would you describe portfolio? Portfolio has become a haven for nerds to create nerdy artwork to the best of their ability. It's kind of a reflection of us as yes. individuals, right? I mean, that's kind of the way we class. are kind of nerdy. And, and in order to kind of um, talk about that a little bit more, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Mrs. French, and, and maybe add in some of the nerdiness that is you? Sure. I have been teaching for 12 years, all here at Millennium. I um, am married to a math teacher, and I'm really bad at math. I have a beautiful little girl named Bailey, and I, I'm pretty nerdy in a lot of realms. Right. Definitely Disney. Love Disney. It's the best. You're a, you're a collector of I am a collector things. of Vinylmations and Fozzy Bears and t-shirts. Sure. I do like nerdy t-shirts too. Yeah. Collector of Vinylmation and Fozzy Bears, but you do not own a I Fozzie do not own a Fozzy Bear Vinylmation. Um, and if you don't know what a Vinylmation is, you will find out either in, during the course of the year or you can check out some of the videos that are on our page. Um, Definitely. And Mr. Speck, you? Um, I am kind of the cliche geeky nerd, although I don't like to use that term for myself. I just think I'm a, an intellectual in the, in the world of all things that are fanboyish. Okay. Um, I, what, what, what kind of things do I collect? Comic books. Comic books. Vinylmation. Vinylmation. Um, Disney memorabilia altogether. Disney memorabilia. You. Um, you like t-shirts too, T-shirts. Video games. Oh yeah. Video games. <laughs> I don't know, I forgot that one. Yeah, video games. Definitely. Uh, and uh, I also do a lot of video stuff and other than that I have a wife and a dog. They're cool too. Um, but that's a little bit about me. So over the course of the beginning part of the semester we we're going to learn a lot about our students and um, we thought it might be even more fun to kind of ask them a few questions. But before we get to that point, wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it be fun if we wrote some questions for each other find out what are our favorite things. That's something we like to do with our students, so we thought it might be uh, a little fun for us to do it. If we're gonna ask our students to do it. We should really be able to do it ourselves. Right, I mean, we should be willing to do it. So, what you can do is, if you're just, you know, if you're one of our students, you'll be able to participate in this as well. And uh, maybe we'll even find a way for all our YouTube friends to participate. I like it. Okay, so um, I think I'll start first. Okay. So my first question for you, what are your three favorite e-ticket attractions? Started with a hard one. You did. Before we start, you want to describe what an e-ticket attraction is for the kids? Yes. An e-ticket attraction has to do with um, years and years ago, long before our time. Before even us. Before us. They, um, That's a long time ago. I know. Upon admission, admission to Disney, you would get um, a book of tickets. And you, you had to buy the tickets. Right. You had to buy the tickets. And each book of tickets came with A tickets, B tickets, C tickets, D tickets, and E tickets. And the better the ride, the less of those tickets you got. Yeah. So, for instance, an A ticket ride would have been like... Um, I don't know. Carousel. Well, uh, yeah, maybe like a carousel. The carousel like might have been an E ticket. I don't know the yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't actually know the labels. And an E ticket ride would have been Space Mountain. Yeah, e-ticket would have been like the best of the best. Right, ride. so you had very few e-tickets and you had more a-tickets, more b-tickets. And that's opposed to like nowadays when you go to the park, once you buy the admission, you kind of just get in. Right. Or you could buy an annual pass and go in whenever you want, i.e. the two of us. So if you're ever at Disney World, there's a good chance you might see one of us because when I'm not there, she's there. We kind of split the days. It is. It's Rarely happens though. Even no, we're both there. there. Yeah. <laughs> we're but even both when there. we're both there, we've only seen each other twice. Yeah, true. Weird. But um, uh, that's because I, I like to go to other parks than just Epcot. <laughs> oh, anyway, so that was that's what an e-ticket is. Yeah. And my favorite e-ticket attractions, I have to go with Space Mountain. Space Mountain's good. Um, 
Soren. Soren's good. Expedition Everest. Nice. So these are the best of the best rides. So those are those are the ones that fit into that category of like you might have to wait a little while to get on the ride. Yes. So one more time, that was Space Mountain, Expedition Everest, and what was that middle one? Soren. Soren. Nice. Nice. And you actually have three different parks there. I do. That was good representation. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. All right, your turn. All right, Mr. Spence, what are your three three favorite comic books ever? Three favorite comic books. Now, are we talking edition? The the series? number no. Or like the, actual the actual, actual issues. issues. All right. For the comic book. Um. Now, do they have to be ones I own? No. Or just anything ever. Um, okay, so one I don't own, but I would really love to have, would be, and this would be one of my best ones, would be Wolverine number one. I would love that, that I have like two, three, four, five, I have like all the way up to like 50 almost. Um, a couple mixed issues. But Wolverine number one would be, would be stellar. I would That's love that. That's what I've always thought I would buy you if I get rich. When you get I'm rich, you buy Wolverine me Wolverine number, number one. one. That'd be good. I, I saw I, it on Comic Book Men one time. And yeah. I thought, I saw you would really love. I that. saw a inexpensive copy of it. It wasn't like in the best condition. I could have had it like in a fair condition for like forty bucks. That wouldn't have been horrible, but you but know. in great condition. It's, it's a exactly, good comic book. Exactly. Exactly. The rest of the series I have in really good condition. But if I wanted to, you know, go low, I could do that. All right. So that's one. Right. All right. That's that's my one. Um, you know, I don't want to go just like what's rare and valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, if you could, if I could get like. Either like the first edition, like the first action comics where Superman showed up, or the first uh, issue where Batman showed up. That'd be that'd be great. Um, I've always been very fond of a series called New Frontier. Okay. And it's basically like a take on like where the Justice League came from, how they how they came about. Mm -hmm. It's very it's a very stylized book. If you ever get a chance to read it, it's very cool. Um, they, they, it comes in like big old graphic novel, but mm -hmm. I, I like some of the issues from that. Uh, and it's called New Frontier, DC New Frontier, and um, it's very stylized. Um, I could almost compare it to like the style of, um, it, it very much set in the 60s. And that's what I like about okay. it, because it's a current comic book, but they, they made it look like it was in the 60s. So Kind of like um, Arkham City was in like the Wild West. Right, right, right. Yeah, oh, yes, the, the Arkham comic book was in the Wild West. That's exactly right, how it, how it was set in the... Arkham City? No, it, Arkham City's a video game. Um, what, what's it, it was called? Wild... wild all-Star Western Comics. Was it? Yeah, it's a really cheesy name, but they did that on purpose because Western comic books tend to be a little bit cheesy. It it was. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess I guess those are just some of the some. Of, I mean, it, you purposely picked a question that would be impossible for me to answer. I know. So. I tried. <laughs> but those those that's a rough idea. So, anyways, I love comic books. My favorite superhero is Wolverine. Just yes. throwing it out there. Um, yeah. Next question for you. This is so my my next one's kind of tough too, so I don't feel okay. bad about it. What were your favorite cartoons to watch during the first decade of your life? For those of you who don't know, decade <laughs> is ten years. What does decade mean? So the first ten years of my life. Yes. Wow. Um, Essentially, when you were a kid, you know. Yes. Um, okay, so I was an only child till I was six. Which meant I got to pick what was on TV. Yeah. And then, so as you movie. and I know, little siblings come along and yeah. you don't always get to pick anymore. True. Sometimes they yeah, pick cool stuff, sometimes they don't. I usually try to tell my little siblings. Uh, how many people ever told their little sibling what they liked? I bet a bunch of people. I bet a bunch of people just raised their hand. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I would go with... First 10 years of my life. I would have to go with Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright's a good one. Because she was really cool. How would you describe Rainbow Bright for people who haven't seen Rainbow her? Bright is like a... The original Powerpuff Girl. Yeah, she's like a little blonde girl in a big space costume with cool boots and she sparkles and she has animals. I kind of think of her more like a modern day strawberry shortcake from Rainbow Land. From space. Yes, from yeah. space. Maybe take Powerpuff Girls and smush it with uh, strawberry shortcake and then put it in the setting of space. Yes, exactly. It sounds awesome. I can't believe it's still not around, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. That really actually sounds amazing. So, I would, yeah, definitely go Rainbow Bright. Um, I would have to go with 
Of the two, I'm trying to think of these two. I probably preferred DuckTales to Tailspin. DuckTales is good, for sure. Yes. Disney had an afternoon block that was on, and yeah. that, that's good stuff. Okay. You can't go wrong with DuckTales. No. One. And then I'd have to go with Barbie and the Rockers. Barbie and the Rockers. You were one of those weird kids that actually liked Barbie and the Rockers more than Jem. Yeah, I know. Oh, I love Jem, <laughs> but the kids I did. have no idea what we're talking about. I, Je, no, Jem's on the hub right now. Really? Yes. Bailey's watched it a couple times. Barbie and the Rockers, though, over Jem. Yes, because That's I have. I don't. I didn't collect Barbies as a kid. I am not very girly. I'm kind of the opposite of girly. So if I was going to buy you a present, I wouldn't focus on something totally girly. I wouldn't buy you something princess. Not, no, not necessarily. Okay, good, good to know. I try to always keep track of what, what types of things I would buy you for a gift, but I'll, I'll keep that in mind when Christmas comes around. Thank you. So yeah, I had, the only Barbie I had was the Barbie and the Rocker. So, I... And I'm but, assuming it's a rock and roll Barbie, not like a Barbie and a Rocker, like Rocky back and forth. <laughs> no, she's not a granny Barbie. She's yeah. an... Wouldn't actress. sell too much. No. I actually still have one Barbie. Oh, really? My mom got me a Barbie. Um, that, that one little bit of girliness that you're holding on to. She's a NASCAR Barbie. <laughs> She's National a Association Stock Car Association. <laughs> National Association of Stock Car or Auto Racing. Auto Racing. Oh. Mr. Spect, what are your three favorite Disney songs? Oh, okay. Three favorite Disney songs. Um, all right, are we, are we, I always have to ask the question, so you're just not specific enough. I'm question. sorry. Are we extending it to like Pixar? You may extend it to Pixar. Okay. You may not extend it to Muppets or Marvel. Okay, sounds good, that, that's fair, uh, that's fair. Uh, it's, uh, let me think through Pixar real quick. Uh, Pixar, the hard thing is like, Pixar, Pixar movies are oftentimes cheesy in their songs. Like Rand, yes. Randy Newman writes a lot, if you don't know who Randy Newman is, um, he's a writer and he's, he writes like, his songs are like observational. So, yes. Like, you know. And they re they very much fit into the moment. Yeah, they you don't got a friend of me. Yes. was one of his. They don't always fit into the moment of your life. Yeah. Um, so I don't even know if there's a Pixar one I would pick. Um, so I don't know why I had to ask the question. Okay. Um, I'm gonna you're gonna have to pick like a Lion King one standard, right? How many Lion King fans out there? You gotta pick Lion King because uh, and it's probably gonna be uh, I can't wait to be king. Will good be one. one of them because good one. I, I love that, and again, it, it comes from you in a visual perspective. Perspective, if you watch that part of the movie, the whole film changes mm. to like a very stylized, colorful thing. So I always, I always really, really, really like that. Um, I'm trying to think, I mean, sometimes I really like the scary songs in movies. Sometimes when the villain gets to sing, that's kind of cool. But not, there's not one that really uh, sticks in my head. Always kind of like the Cruella de Vil song. Bailey likes that song because a lot. of the yes. fact if you watch 101 Dalmatians. Unlike most Disney cartoons, it's not a musical. There's right. that song, and there's a very short jingle at the end, which is surprising because the guy who owns all the dogs is a musician. Right. So I always thought that was kind of cool. So I guess uh, Cruella de Vil. And then I've always been a huge fan of the music in the Jungle Book. There's some really good songs in Jungle Book. If I had to pick one, um, it would have to be, what's the one that he sings with? Uh, King Louie. I want to be scene. like you. I want to be like you. Because that one's cool because it's got a lot of Im improv lines that the, the, the voice okay. actors did. Funny story. You know how okay. I, I constantly tell stories about how my brother watched everything on repeat. Mm -hmm. Everything he loved watch, was watched on repeat until you knew every word. Yeah. One of his favorite videos, which he wore out and had to buy a second one, was the sing-along songs to Jungle Book? the Jungle Book, which is called The Bare Necessities. I see it. So He seems like a Mowgli type to me. For one, I know about your brother. He didn't like watching The Jungle Book. He just wanted to watch the I still see him as a Mowgli type. He does I like saw, to climb trees. I saw him hanging out with a bear once. Yes. You know what? That's funny because we took him to another <laughs> story. When he was little, very little, we took him to Disney. He, We thought, okay, he's going to love Baloo because he's watched this movie a thousand times. Yeah. Baloo took his bottle and pretended to suck on it. And Reed was traumatized. Wow. Forever. One time, another second story okay. about that. One time they had a special event at Animal Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And um, when we went, it was you could meet like special characters that don't aren't usually in the park. Right. Um, so they had like Baloo, but they had Mo weird one Mowgli, I've never which seen is Mowgli. really freaky because Mowgli's only wearing a loincloth. 
It was really freaky, but actually what they do is because it's Disney and you can't be walking around in just a length off, they actually had like a full body tan right. suit. Um, but what was the other side of that was kind of cool was they had Colonel Hothi, which is, he's an elephant. It was a two person costume. No way! So it was literally a Disney employee who was getting paid to be the back end of an elephant. That's pretty nice. I, I don't know if that's a job for me. If I if I had to get a Disney job, I don't know if that's a job for me. I'd rather be the back end of an elephant than be the person who goes and scoops out the elephant stuff. Fair at enough. Animal Fair enough. But just consider this: you have to be considerate of what the person in front of you had for lunch. That is very true. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not going to get into any more details than that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> back end of the elephant. Don't you don't want to be it? I'm just I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there. Um, all right. So I guess it's my turn. This one's a good one. This will tell us a lot about Mrs. French and how to get on her good side. What are your favorite sweet treats? Sweet treats. So if you want to get her in a good mood, this is what you bring in the class. Ready? Okay. Well, the number one rule is Miss French does not eat cake. I love cupcakes to look at. To look at. I was going to say, she, visually she loves cupcakes. Visually I love cupcakes. I think they're sweet and they make you happy. I don't like cake. Hmm. I don't have a good reason for it. I've never liked it. I like the flavor of cake batter, though. So if, if you, you make if like, you had a choice between eating a cupcake or eating the frosting on top of the cupcake, which would you choose? Go. Either. I don't like. Neither. Either. Wow, like either it's the combination of them. Yes. I well, both of them, and then when you combine them, I don't like either of them. So. Are you like one of those people that like muffins more than cupcakes? Yes. I am as well, and I get ridiculed. How many people out there are muffin lovers? And my favorite muffin, cornbread. I love cornbread. Yeah, and I'm also not a huge fan of cupcakes, so no one's going to ridicule you for that. So, but as I recall, the question was, what are your favorite yes, sweet yes. treats? I just, I, I I just know wanted to lay that one out first. Don't, don't bring her cupcakes? Okay. So, um, Although you would eat a cupcake if someone brought it for you. Yeah, I, I will always try it. Yeah. Because it's just silly. What about moon pies? It. Would you eat moon pies if someone brought that for you? Um, I generally did not eat the moon pies. I gave them to you. I did eat the zucchini bread because it was Ooh. yummy. And unfortunately I ate the whole bar of zucchini bread like in five minutes. So you were that kid, you were that kid who were like, hey, you know, it's their birthday, everyone's bringing cupcakes, you brought zucchini bread. Yes. Wow. That's that, how it goes. That explains your popularity mm -hmm. in school. I know. <laughs> Just not good. Okay, so favorites. Um I am going to have to go with This is a hard question. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, no. Number one, donuts. I, well, I knew that one. I am a donut fanatic. I love donuts. Yeah, specifically glazed donuts. I specifically, if I'm not gonna get to choose and I can't see the donut, then yes, a glazed donut. The glazed donuts are the safe bet of the They donuts. are the safe bet. Yeah. I, I've never, I don't think I've ever had a really bad glazed donut. Is there a specific location you like your donuts most? What is the best place to go for donuts? Donuts to go. Donuts to go. In, yeah. in here, in... We've actually had kids bring in donuts we to go did. before. So, we actually have FYI. We had a wonderful student for our going away teacher present bring us each a half dozen donuts to go. If any students ever wanted to do that, or if someone in YouTube land wanted to mail us at we Muddy Middle here. School, Sanford, Florida. We are here to accept them. Of course, by the time the donuts got here, they might be a little grotty. I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe donuts to go delivers. It is only right down the street. Okay, also, um, let's see. Donuts number one. Donuts number one. I like homemade chocolate chip cookies. Oh yeah. Um, but you won't eat store bought. I will if you buy the dough and bake that. That is fine. Okay. If you buy store bought cookies, they're not my favorite. They always have a weird taste. To yeah. Me. And maybe because I just don't need a lot of sweets. And maybe because they have to sit around for a while. That too. At, on the store on the shelves. Okay. How about let's start for your third one. How about if you were trick or treating? If you're trick or treating, what would you most love to see put in your bag? Oh, butterfingers. Butterfingers, there we go. Okay, so butterfingers. I actually think I saw a student bribe you with a butterfinger once. After Halloween. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, uh, do, there's an Instagram picture that after Halloween I had a, a whole mound of butterfingers and almond yeah. joy. I think I, I think I was aware of that. I wasn't gonna share it with the world, but I just did. It just means you make me happy for the day. Yeah, That's for the, all. It's worth it. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Okay. Number three. Miss Respect, what are your three favorite 80s movies? Oh, three favorite. 
This one, this is actually your easiest one of the group. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know Back to the Future is one of them. Right. Hopefully some of you guys have seen Back to the Future. Um, Back to the Future would be one. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That's right, yeah. Who Framed, I loved Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Saw it three times in the movie theater. I think I told you that yes. um, as a kid. And then, you know, the only part with the, the third one is there's so many great 80s movies. You know, there's uh, all the John Hughes movies. If you don't know who John Hughes is, he had made a lot of good movies. You actually Pretty probably thing. do. Breakfast Club, 16 Candles. Because The Breakfast Club appears in Pitch Perfect as well. Oh, really? The so, more I tell you about this movie, the more I think you really need to see it. No, the more you tell me to do something, the more I'm going to fight it. That's true. <laughs> uh, hmm. And then for my last one, I might go with just a classic because you don't want to end it with a whole friendship between you and me thing. I'm going to go Goonies. Yeah. Those Goonies are, is awesome. Th would you say all, all those films are semi-required? Uh, mm -hmm. Watching, we don't have required reading per se, but we do have required watching. Would you say that's not required I watching think for the those students have out to there? Be required watching. I definitely think you need a favorite Disney movie. You need to know the difference between Disney and Pixar movies. Yeah. And you definitely need to have a frame of reference to '80s movies. Yeah. I would also throw in there Ghostbusters. Yeah. You know, if you haven't seen Ghost, and I don't even yeah. care if you see Ghostbusters sure. one or two, yeah. you got to see. Well, a Ghostbusters. one's better, but uh, if you're gonna oh. go, like, go one. Yeah, you but, also, but also, I think two didn't two come out in the early 90s? Yes. So technically, the quintessentially 80s one. True, true. So, That's j true. just thinking, I was just thinking that. Um, if you guys can think of any 80s movies that um, we should add to our list, feel free to leave it in the comments section below here, maybe we'll add that. And as far as favorite candies, you could add that as well too, I'd like to see Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, but I think what we'll do, you and I, is we'll give the kids an opportunity to tell us a little bit about their favorite things. Alrighty. So if you're in our class, what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys a little worksheet um, with a list, a whole list of questions, more than three, yes. about just what are your favorite things. So it'll give us a chance to, number one, learn about you, but number two, we can act we're actually devious in our, in our ideas. We're actually going to use some of this stuff in future projects. Yes, right? we want you to... Um to really have a time to sit down and think about the things that really inspire you. Yeah. We actually call this your inspiration sheet. Those things that you always find yourself going to. Yeah. You know, Mr. Speck just saw a Lego Back to the Future set. And that seems really cool to him because he loves Back to the Future and he loves Legos and you combine the two and that's the sure. best thing ever. And so should you. You sh Yes. You should like both of those things. Although you can like whatever you want to. But you should like those two things. <laughs> Just add that to the list of things to like. Okay. Other than that, you can pick your own things. Um, but what about the people at home? There might be some people out there who, I mean, first of all, I apologize that you can't take our class. Uh, we're Especially, very sorry for yeah, you. I really feel sorry for you. We wish we could welcome you in. Um, what I might do is, why don't I just leave a copy of it in the in the description below the video? That sounds like a great idea. That's very nice of me. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, you can always contact us and let us know what you think uh, about you your favorites. You can actually um, take a picture of your answers and tag us on our Instagram page. Yeah, we're on Instagram as well, so you can check that out. Um, and when you get a moment, even check out some of the other videos we have on this page because we have a lot of stuff. We do. So We like to talk. All right. Yeah, we do. So <laughs> we probably should stop and okay. give them a chance to do their thing. So uh, we'll see you next time.